Hey guys, hello and welcome to Speedy Medical. In this video, we are going to take on the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. In our previous video, we talked about how there are various types of cells within the thyroid gland and how various types of carcinomas they can arise from those cells. So if you haven't watched the previous video, please watch the first video and then come to this video. Now, if we talk about the papillary carcinoma of thyroid, the papillary carcinoma of thyroid is the most common type of thyroid cancer and approximately 80 to 85 percent of the cases of thyroid cancers are papillary carcinoma of thyroid. The basic reason or the basic pathogenesis of papillary carcinoma of thyroid is not clear but it is known that if there is a history of ionizing radiation then there will be an increased risk of papillary carcinoma. So if there is a history of ionizing radiation to the head and neck region then there will be an increased risk of developing the papillary carcinoma. Now the patient in this case will present with a solitary thyroid nodule which means that there will be a single nodule in the thyroid gland and this thyroid nodule is increasing with time and the patient will be euthyroid which means that the status of thyroid gland will be normal that it will be neither increased nor decreased. Now the next step in the management of these patient is to find out what is the lesion. So we have to do what is called as fine needle aspiration biopsy. In this by placing a fine needle in the thyroid gland we will obtain a sample of this thyroid tissue and then we will subject this tissue to histopathology. So we will subject the tissue to histopathology and we will make out the diagnosis of the lesion. So in case of papillary carcinoma, when we do the histopathology, then following features are seen. First of all, there is a papillary pattern, which means that you can see the follicular cells, but they are arranged in a papillary pattern, which means that papillae are formed. Now let's consider that this is a fibrovascular core, which means that the blood vessels and the fibrous tissue, they are within this core. Now the papillae will look something like this. They will have a fibrovascular core and they will there will be follicular cells which will be arranged in the form of these papillae. So the first feature in the papillary carcinoma of thyroid when we do the histopathology is the papillary projections. Now within these papillary projections we have calcifications and these calcifications within the papillary pattern are called as the somoma bodies. So these are the typical feature of the papillary carcinoma of thyroid that is we see a papillary pattern and then we see what are called as the somoma bodies and these somoma bodies they are just the calcification so they are called as somoma bodies. Now there are various other lesions in which somoma bodies are found and I will talk about them in some other video. Now the third histopathological feature is what is called as orphan NEI nucleus. Now what is orphan NEI nucleus? Now within the nucleus of these follicular cells, the chromatin is very fine. As a result of this, when we see the nucleus under the microscope, it looks as if it is transparent and this arrangement of nucleus is called as orphan NEI nucleus because it resembles the eye of a cartoon character which was called as orphan NEI. So this is called as orphan NEI nucleus and the last feature on the microscope is what is called as intranuclear inclusion. So what are these intranuclear inclusion? Now basically what happens over there is that when we see under the microscope it will look like that the cytoplasm is throwing some infoldings within the nucleus and these are called as the intranuclear inclusions and these are basically the pseudo occlusions these are not the true inclusions so these are the pseudo inclusions and these are not the true inclusions so these are the features which will be seen in the microscope if this is the case of papillary carcinoma of the thyroid now quickly if we talk about the management or the treatment of papillary carcinoma of thyroid 
the treatment would depend on the size of the papillary carcinoma and the site of the papillary carcinoma now let's consider that the papillary carcinoma is isolated and its size is small then the treatment will be simple lobectomy in which we will cut out the lobe in which the papillary carcinoma has arise but if the size of papillary carcinoma is more and the papillary carcinoma is found at multiple places then we will have to do a total thyroidectomy in which we will completely remove the thyroid gland so this is called as total thyroidectomy so this was the whole idea about the papillary carcinoma of thyroid and what are the clinical features which help us to diagnose the papillary carcinoma and what is the treatment also a very important point about the papillary carcinoma is that the papillary carcinoma spreads via the lymphatic route so there are two modes of spread one is the lymphatic route and one is the hematogenous route but this papillary carcinoma it spreads mainly via the lymphatic route and very rarely it can spread through the hematogenous route that is through the blood vessel and the most common site of metastasis like where the papillary carcinoma metastasize is the lungs so papillary carcinoma it tends to metastasize into the lungs so this was the whole idea about the papillary carcinoma of the thyroid i hope you like this video